the World Finals to take place on Saturday. Moscow 5, Ben Q. They are one game away from qualifying themselves for that grand final. It's 1-0 in this best of three. They are winning in this matchup. M5 wants this. TPA needs this to stay alive. Getting that sapling pull. There's going to be a little bit of an invasion here as they saw. Darien leaving the bush. They're being very quickly quick on this as well. They have given up the fact that they are now in the jungle. And we're going to see a rotation here that top side. Moscow 5 is going to start going after the other blue as well. TPA is going back though. Freak, this could completely be a strategy where they push that in there and then they're going to be waiting for this fight. However, they don't know how many members are on the other side, so they're really walking into danger here. Oh, they got spotted. I mean, their, their opening play was really, right. really cool. Use saplings, use traps, put some wards down. Make sure you keep track of the opposition. They know their level one is so, so much stronger. And they've got the stun on the Gozu Pepper. Gozu not looking good, and this may be the first blood coming out, and Phoebe comes up strong. A full assist to the rest of the team. He's not even going to bother casting the uh, passive. <laughs> Finally deals, uh, shoots it out at the end. No kill there. Great moves by TP. I'm surprised they picked that up, though, because they got spotted by a zillion on the way through mid. Ghosty should have known they were coming across right there, but still a great initiation coming out overall. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at this roster, and, yeah, just it took, like, one flash to make that happen. I mean, really, really good opening. TPA off in the driver's seat. They did give that 400, kill, that 400 gold to BB, but the one thing to remember is he has not spent that gold yet. BB does not have that gold in his pocket. Uh, he has the gold in his pockets, but not on his character. So that level one fight, that top lane, is still going to be just the same as always. Great farming house coming in. They're trying to get the junglers through as fast as possible. We do see the smite is down onto Diamond, and he holds his smite on little balls. So he's going to be looking to get around the jungle and get out quite quickly with that assist. It's going to help him get those items that he needs to keep scaling rather into this game looks like we do have boots pots going on to gozu he blew one of those as he went down so that lane is going to be aggressive but they're going to be looking for fast kills and then to get back out freak they have no vision to be safe in that lane two minutes and 30 seconds in another invasion coming in here the red buff dot or the dot is still there for diamond he can see that they're taking this because the skull is still on the map for him he looks to go in he will not be able to get it it goes to maokai and they're going to be forced no actually little balls or he did get that sorry Diamond does pick up his red buff. They take out Mistake in this situation. Alex coming up with a kill for himself. Genja forcing himself into this fight, flashing over the wall. And Babe ZB rather could pick himself up a kill here. Beautiful shield coming from Oriana. And that makes it 3 to 1 overall. These invasions so strong from TPA. We said they had a better level 1 team. They're happy to invade and they're just pushing for it. I'm so actually surprised that M5 said, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's keep fighting you at level 1. Let's please put ourselves in these terrible situations where we're about to get picked off. And that was brutal overall. So much damage dealt back onto them. Poor Ghosty Pepper still not even level 2. You know, the rank 1 Strangle Thorns is nice, but not putting out a lot of punishment overall. That was pretty risky. This opening for TPA so, so good. Very scary BB now, 2-0 and 1 as Vayne this early in the game. Vayne is a late game carry, but will still put out the pain if given the chance to do so within these early levels. Only four minutes into the game, Gosu trying to throw out the harassment. They know they don't have too much control of that lane, as I said before, with the wards. So they're really trying to push these guys out of lane as much as possible. So if there is a gank, they're not affected by it as much. Zillion, Alex Ish playing the role for everybody on his team, and really everybody is assisting each other right now. And the one thing that M5 needs to do right here is to realize that BB has still not gotten back to lane to buy any items. So he, he, despite all of these kills, despite everything, at this second, he's on equal footing to Genja. The, the, I guess I'd call it the top lane, but those dual lanes there are, are identical right now as far as power is concerned. There's a little bit of experience in the lead, but that's about it. The, the, you know, the golden items, it's a wash right there. And so uh, M5 needs to hold them in lane as long as possible and keep Vayne from buying. The second she buys, she's dominant in lane. These are where the words would come into play. Gozu could find himself out, but he calls the time in his head and says, he feels right for little balls. We've seen him around the jungle. I'm going to time this, sa or this seedling and throw it in the bush. Really throwing little balls off there, but he still has a chance to come around the backside. You can see the cautious play. Mistake a little too aggressive there and really telegraphs this one in. No chance for an attack on that. But they can perfectly zone this lane. You right. look at the minion wave, and actually, it's now actually bigger on TPA's side, so it will push to the turret, and so M5 can kind of sit on their heels and wait. They won't lose too many minions if they just simply wait in the background and let it push to their turret. Because the wave is so much larger on the other side, you're not expecting to uh, have your minions really pick off too much in that wave, and they'll be pretty safe overall. Alex H getting a little harassment done to him, but Diamond Prox perfectly there as he makes his way through the jungle. 
really not what TPA needs. A huge attack onto BB out top. He pushes back Genja. Great mechanics to really push out the damage that's going to be coming at him in the fight. Stanley putting Gresham down bottom here. 3-1 to one in this matchup. And Gold, like I said, going to Vayne. But Reek mentioned she has not fought yet. So the aggression in the lane can really be thwarted if Diamond finds himself top at the right time. A lot of mana being used here by Alex Ish. He's going to be thrown in, but Diamond's there once again. The 3v1, the 3v2 situation, rather. Alex not in a good position, not level 6, and he will go down. Diamond cannot assist. And that is, again, them putting the pressure on over and over and over again. And this is really, really good. Lowballs with so much crowd control. And the beautiful thing was, they pulled Mistake down to support mid once they sent BB to go back and recall and buy items. That Mistake says, you know what? I don't have too much money. I don't need to buy just yet. It's not that big of a deal. It's only 400 gold. While you go buy BB, I'm going to go support someone else on the map. Let's put a gank together. Let's go ahead and make this happen. Let's make that fight go down. And look at that. A beautiful start. Oh, wow. They get Genjo right out. They are able to take him down. Mistake. Picking himself up a kill. BB kind of focusing back there. They may be able to get another kill. They forced a flash on Gosu. That's going to be quite big for them. This lane can now continuously be aggressive, Freak. The mechanic there for TPA was really, really strong. After that first kill, notice that Mistake walked forward and made sure he pulled turret aggro. As soon as a turret hits a champion, it will stay on that champion until he leaves range, no matter what. No matter if someone swings at you, no matter whatever happens, until that guy dies or leaves range, it will stay on Mistake. And so he sat there and said, yes, hit me, hit me, hit me. He, you know, and, and, and Ghost Pepper knew he had to flash to escape that because Vayne would have kept stutter stepping, walking over and swinging, walking and swinging, walking and swinging. He was three hits from getting the kill, forced the flash. At that point, there was too much pressure required. He got Stanley out. going aggressive on Darien here. You can see the sustain coming into play a bit as they damage trade equally. You can see just how confident Taipei Assassins is right now with a few of their purchases. Quick chalice buys going in both lanes of Stanley as well as Toys. The boots of mobility onto Maokai as well. Little Ball's trying to get these ganks to happen more often and get them to happen in favor of his teammates. He's been doing a great job. Right now he has four assists. And like I said at the beginning, Freak, when you grab Maokai, it's going to be to set those lanes up for the ganks. You're grabbing all the extra gold. Exactly. It's very ironic that when you pick a, a tanky jungler like Maokai, they're actually called aggressive junglers because they show up for ganks and they fight champions a lot. And they transition into tanks late game. He's so happy to get that gold, of course, because right. it gets his gold generation items really quickly. And actually, instead of that, he's continuing to play aggressive. He's actually going boost mobility early on instead and using that for further gank potential. Now to go through these builds some more, you're seeing kind of a sustained war there. Stanley going Chalice. Uh oh, here's some Simon. Toys is on. They are going to lock him down. Command Shockwave comes out. They get a little bomb damage there. The blue buff is going to keep Toys on the aggressive. He's going to be able to throw out a few more auto attacks. Each one scaling with a bit more damage. The ping's top lane is they have Tarn off to the side of it. Stanley trying to heal himself up in that bottom lane bush. Continuously pushing that lane. 63 to 52. The matchup still in anybody's favor there. Nobody really has the upper hand. They both have pretty good regen going down for themselves right now. And you can see him. Really no mana still staying in that lane. Top lane still being addressed quite a bit as the junglers both leaving their red buffs right now. You could see a little bit of aggression towards that top lane. The boards are down for both teams here as they start to really figure out that the, the abilities are up. Everybody's starting to get their ultimates freaked. The team fights are going to start to come to fruition a little bit here. Yeah, I think, and then one big thing here for Stanley is he's actually got summoner teleport overall. So he'll be able to show up to those fights much more frequently. I think TPA definitely wants to keep moving in and put that pressure on because they, you know, they, they want to keep the aggression going. They've got enough of an advantage. They can actually keep pushing that advantage. Vayne is such a good duelist. We talked about that in, in the post game to game one, where Vayne was able to go on and do whatever she wanted and just simply be that queen duelist. And so they want to keep putting her in fights where she can win. They want to keep putting toys in those battles as well. He's got enough mana region. He's got good enough cooldowns, and he will keep putting pressure on the map as well. The overall team fight here, 10 minutes in the game, is just better for TPA. I think M5 would love to let this kind of sit down and you know just let Tur take a bit of damage and just let that you know fight people out. Now it's deep, the dangerous spot. He throws down the chrono ship. They're still attacking and they allow him to go down. But there's a little bit of crowd control here still. Can they go for it? And they will drop him a second time with that ignite on. Diamond trying to go for the kill, but Little Boss flashes out perfectly on top of the wood. The teleport comes in from Stanley, and it looks like they may continue to dive. The flash is forced out. So many summoner spells used in that fight coming into 10 minutes in the game, but TPA grabbing an upper hand there. And they're going to keep that pressure on, that summon teleport being used, forcing the flash away from Diamond, and that severely limits Diamond's opening potentials. Look at who he could gank. 
trying to gank Needly, she can pounce away. You try to gank Orianna, she's got that command dissonance, and there's not enough crowd control from Alex Eish on, uh, on Zillion to make, make her stomp down either. You try to gank for BB, ah, uh, he's got Condemned. There is really no opening for Diamond without Flash. These solo lanes, or really every lane for Taipei Assassins, is safe from New Year's pressures. And so they're going to be happy to keep scaling through this game and keep putting pressure on their lanes. Look at the minion count differences. 93 to 59, 83 to 53, 86 to 74. Even Needly's winning her solo lane without any aggression from other sides. Funeral Freak, I gotta hand it to BB right now. He is connecting so many third silver bolts and just keeping Genjin down in health. Always about 10% HP. Rolling into the turret to take one shot and back out. The mechanics of BB right now are completely winning that lane. Stanley definitively winning his bottom lane, but now allowing Darian to farm. Like you said, don't focus Darian top. We have to free up little balls. That's not where you want to be. Darian, very much like Wicked, can be beat the entire game and still come back to be a formidable opponent towards that late game. So I have to see what he can do now with his turret being the first to fall, Free. Well, it doesn't really help him very much with that turret down, of course. Darian now has actually even more avenues of getting jumped upon. But the thing is, TPA, they don't really want to get Stanley fed. They don't really want to shut down Darian. So even though he's available, it's not really the best place to go. He's dropping out a turret up top. A lot of focus from Moscow 5 as they know they're losing turrets. They get themselves golden experience to trade that one off after a two turret loss. They're going to be focusing towards mid here. The pings are going down. It actually comes from their own team. TPA is just saying, I think you guys are pretty safe up there. We got vision of Moscow 5 in mid. And you can see BB taking some extra shots. These guys are just really playing a calm game. And this is really, you know, the, the kind of play that M5 needs to, to, to make. Because, you know, they know that those outer turrets will go down regardless because they know they've got absolutely no map control right now. And TPA will eventually kill those turrets regardless. So what they want to do is say, you know what? You'll kill them. I get it. While you're doing that, we're just going to set up dragon takes. Because, you know, when you're down 4,000 gold, 4,000 gold means a lot when everyone's got like 10k. It's a very, very big margin. And, and absolutely, TPA is very far ahead right now. But if, you, if everyone has... 20,000 gold, or 30,000 gold, or 40,000 gold, then 4,000 gold means a lot less. And they want to reach that kind of situation. So, yes, they'll trade 1,000 gold for 1,000 gold. They'll, you know, kind of get in these, these fights that aren't champion versus champion. You know, they're going for a dragon, the other team goes for a turret. They're going to farm some of the other team farms. Some. They're going to try to trade those sort of moot advantages and just kind of let the game push on forward. They're going to try to buy, you know, some time and, and, and push themselves through this matchup because they've still got a pretty much impossible to kill Kog'Maw. There are no assassins really here on Taipei Assassins. You're seeing uh, a, a safe skill from Stanley. He's got Wriggles and a child. He's not, like, rushing Trinity for us. He's not looking to... Uh, Jump someone out with a death cap or go uh, for a Gintu's Rage Blade. He's simply there to be a, a, a really annoying sort of force in the mid lane, or sorry, a, annoying force in the bottom lane, kind of mess with Darien, and just kind of toss heals to BB and let him scale. So uh, it's really up to M5 to farm out their solos, get tanks in the way, and then let Genja get some gold. So Taipei Assassins super bringing out their suffoc suffocation strategy right here. If you guys want to rewatch this, tell your friends exactly how it's done. Moscow 5, a definitive game last time. They really come out huge. Everything was crumbling in their favor. The kills from TPA, like we said, the Stand United and Requiem down bottom last game, those were all going in favor of Moscow 5, those little instances. TPA is creating all of them, for all of these for themselves this game. They destroy top lane. They leave BB now to run. They destroy mid lane and now suffocating that bottom lane because they knew Darian was going to be down there to farm a broken down turret. So these guys are completely controlling the map. Like Moscow 5 usually does, they get to a lane as soon as it's ready to be pushed. They don't give the other team time to rotate over. And we can see you, Moscow 5 right along the base of their own uh, entrance, just running back and forth, trying to find where TBA is going in Lake Cat House. And what's happening right here, though, is M5 is completely stagnating pushes on those secondary turrets. You know, like we just said, M5 knows their outer turrets will fall down, but they know that, that middle turrets are much harder to go for. And, of course, as I say that, TPA is about to fill a secondary <laughs> turret here. Uh, but you saw them kind of get forced. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so they push them back, right? These secondary turrets are hard to kill. They're, they're deep in enemy territory. It's much easier to bring reinforcements around. It, it's very hard to take them out without uh, getting pressured. And so you're seeing that over and over where, where M5 is able to defend this kind of situation. Now, TPA is harassing. They're putting some damage down, but they're not killing them off. And, and, and while this is happening, you can just see at this top lane, Genja is just left alone, farming and farming and farming and trying to catch up in this game. Now certainly, 
nowhere near the kind of gold that Vayne has on Vivi. But again, their strategy is protect the X, protect the Kog'Maw, it's get him to late game, and when he finally reaches that, that's where, where, where M5 is going to shine. They just need to wait another 10 minutes. Three members of Moscow 5 with 129 minions, actually. All of them the highest in the game right now as they tie each other for that score. And really, nobody's trying to farm it out. Finally, BB breaking that one down goes up to 100 and plus 30. Six to one at 15 minutes into the game. 22,000 to 17,000 gold. We can just see who has accrued the most, and that goes to 56,000 on DB. Vayne being very strong, the Dazzle on to Darien, and they're really just trying to get shots onto this turret. Yeah, now firing onto Darren Freak. The pressure is here in each lane, and they're really spreading themselves thin, but making it work. This is really this is exactly what TP needs to do. Is again, they know their mid game is so much stronger. They will just keep pushing for turrets. This is exactly what they want, and you know, you'll see them keep cycling through. And and they've sent Needle and Oriana as the solos because they're they're kind of the, the most safe. They've got the most mobility. They can heal themselves. They can pounce away or, or, or you know crowd control the opponents. They're going to keep sitting in those situations. Lowball's actually here to bait a counter engage, sitting in that rush for a little while, trying to see if they would jump on BB in mistake. But that's not going to be the case. They're just simply pushing for turrets as hard as possible over and over and over. And, and again, because M5 wants to stall, TPA wants to close this out. They will simply, no matter how hard it is to do, they are just going to keep pushing because that's the only thing they've got left to do. Now, Free, coming into this portion of the game, however, we see that Moscow 5 is forced out of a lot of these fights. It seems in or out of the jungle, Taipei is bringing a stronger team right now. And this is because a lot of it is, is honestly gold-based, that their level one team is strong. This is kind of what happens when you bring an early game focused team, but, and like you'll really have with Tarek Malka and such, um, it is, and, and you're not so much with Yorick, who's like, you know, really terrible at level one, is they just want to go for pressure early on, make those fights happen, and they actually made those fights happen. That's, that's the really thing for an early game team, is you've got to actually fight to do it. Stanley very low on mana, initiating too hard here. His team is really split between left and right. Toys taking a bit of damage there, but they get the damage onto Gosu and Alex. They've done a great job at just taking those cooldowns. Stanley was really caught out of position there, but Moscow 5 knew they didn't have the engage. TPA was forced to run back and forth and make sure he could get out alive. We see Alex each running away, blinking as Genja farms that bottom lane. It's still 154 minions for BB to 122 for Genja. Very much different game for the AD carry here. And this is absolutely going to have to be a game where Moscow 5 adapts to the carry. Yeah, and they've got to just shut down BB absolutely. It's going to be hard to do it, but that's what they've got to go for here. And you're just going to see it be so difficult because TPA are going to be reserved. They're going to be smart about their movements. You're seeing Stanley once again running to that top lane. Now, they don't have a Shen like they had, but they've got a Summoner Teleport, which is just as good. He will shove around that top lane, be very hard to catch with Pounce, with Wriggles, putting extra wards down to make sure he's not watched. And he's just really, really controlling the, mo the, the, the sort of map movements of his opponents. He's going to get nice and farmed. He's going to keep his gold going up. M5 completely controlling Dragons here. This this is how they're going to keep their gold up in this game as they try to stall it out and push forward. But you're just going to see constant pressure. These turrets still able to fall. They're finally going to look for their sixth here as Stanley continues to shove this top lane. And now he's finally, finally transitioning into an actual fighter. He's got that phage. The Trinity Force finally coming up next. You know, he went for Chalice Wriggles just to be a sustained monster and to really mess with, with any counter pushes here. But that's going to be the gameplay is just pushes, pushes, pushes. You know, BB's going to pick up gold on the back of that. Like, even though they've been splitting up and pushing constantly, He's still up there in minions, but I mean, look at look at the gap now. It's 132 to 158. Genja is catching up. That's exactly what M5 wanted. Is Genja? He's gonna get closer and closer on those items. He's got Phantom Dancer, but he needs Zerk Graves. He needs Infinity Edge. Going after Alex. He does not have his ultimate up. Stanley able to take him down, but this is gonna be the fight between Alex and Di or Stanley and Diamond rather. Too much speed coming from Nidalee, the escape artist in that cougar form, and we're going to have to see if they go for this now. TPA trying to force down onto the Baron. It looks like it will be theirs. Darian just on the other side, about to throw a ghoul over, but it's not going to be enough. Do they pursue him? No. They looked like they were going to be the side of the wall for another twisted advance attack. Stanley finds no mana for him, though, but it's not going to be any cost for him in that form. Continues to pressure on, gets as much as he can, and really freak what they're doing right now is just keeping Moscow 5 out of their lanes, allowing a little bit of push here, and great job by Stanley for not allowing Darian to back. And this is one of the most difficult things to do, is to actually close a game out. They know there is a team that's trying to stall. They know Genja is just trying, trying to get gold. And they're, and they're 
tooth and nail defending their secondary turrets because they know as turrets fall, TPA will still scale ahead. No matter how much that Kogma farms, they know if every turret is 150 gold to everyone on the team, they know that Dragon's 190, Baron's 250. If they can keep picking up those margins, they will keep scaling themselves forward. They will absolutely, uh, you know, push themselves farther and farther ahead. And so they're trying to keep these advantages together. And, and with no one getting caught out too much on M5, uh, you know, they're, they're stopping those pushes. But Stanley making a big play actually pushes out Alex Ish, actually makes a 5 on 4 happen, and then baits the rest of the team top lane. TPA have actually created openings on the map. They've finally given themselves these windows to take major advantages and push on through more. Oh, Genja taking so much damage from Stanley, but he's able to trade it back here. He may have enough mana to get this. That W is still on. Throws out the living artillery, but here goes Baby. Slams him against the wall. The York ulti is on, so he will come back to life, but he's instantly brought back down again. Trying to stay in this fight. It is going to be Diamond Prox going down. A huge initiation for BB, and he finally falls. The shutdown going to Darian in this fight. Alex Easter's chrono shift is down. Darian there to keep that pressure on. Goes through Ken, lock them down to the turret. Stanley gets out of that, and it's just huge pressure from Taipei Assassins right now. Darian is, however, able to clean up a few kills for his team. It's now 3-3, three to three, or 4-3 to three now. Finally, the last auto attack and double kill for Toys. The ace oh. on the Moscow 5. <laughs> he almost killed Lil Boss by running a freaking bomb into him. But they did survive that one overall. This turret low enough, they could backdoor it. Toys, yep, there's the shield. Says Lil Boss, come on, dude. Thank you. <laughs> he almost died of the turret as a result there. TPA, flawless team fights. And actually, M5... They did almost pull that one back. Genja got caught out. He took a lot of damage, but they kind of collapsed into that fight really, really well. They nearly turned that one around, but that fight was really carried on the back of the gigantic gold lead that Taipei Assassins built for themselves. M5's power is always team fights. Let's watch that last fight with player audio. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. You can see mistake on the front line of those calls right there with the rest of his team. Once it got a little hectic, but Mistake took right back over. We see Alex doing that for Moscow 5 in these fights. And you're seeing that, you know, both these teams, and you can see just how good they are at team fighting, is they have that one caller who's making the play, saying, here's what we're focusing, here's how we're moving, this is the focus here. And, and, and again, I want to reiterate, I've, seen, I've heard so many teams on their comms just incredibly hectic, everyone barking out orders. That one, you know, captain there making the calls, I mean, th this is, this is a... a, a looking like you know a game three coming up in the semifinals honestly now we're at the four best teams in the world these neither of these teams had lost a map up until this point here in this tournament it looks like they're gonna trade one to one as this game moves forward and i mean these are just you know top caliber teams and they're relying on that one captain to make those plays and it's not, it's just interesting to see you know how do how do top teams differ m5 amazing team fighting tpa here clearly amazing team fighting and great plays as well and it's that captain role that seems to be a really big difference you know freak with how the game went last time moscow 5 was so in the driver's seat i pointed out that you know taipei assassins kind of had a composition that relied a lot on itself but each lane fended for itself that composition of reliance is totally out the window they can all do what they want and their team composition has become that much stronger allowing bb to run by himself he can pretty much 1v3 any situation against this team there's not enough crowd control to just lock him down those dodges by of him and his mechanics this game have been paying dividends for his team Right now, 3, 1, and 4, 5, 0, and 5 coming in from Toys in mid. Toys, another key to victory. Get him get him fed and play around his uh, his game and strategy. And it's just been huge for these guys. And whenever Stanley gets in trouble, we saw him going into that last fight really tanky enough to take on the cool cooldowns for the fight. TPA has just turned this one into their favor, now dictating these fights. And on the front step of Moscow 5 space. Looks like they're going to back off here. Dragon should be coming up quite soon. That was about 17 minutes that it went down. 12 to 4 here. They are in an 8,000 gold lead right now for Taipei Assassins. The good thing here for TPA is that they've got two healers on the roster. They've got Tarek and Needley, both of whom will keep the health bars sustained from that team. You've got three points in the heal of Tarek. You've got, I'm going to guess, five. You've got five points in the heal for Needley as well. 
they've got a decent amount of sustain here, you know, plus the Chalice there immediately giving her some nice mana regeneration. I mean, th this roster is is about sieging. And when you consider one of the biggest long-range nukes is going to be Time Bomb, it's a very it's very easy for Toys and Oriana to shield that damage output as well. Honestly, TPA, uh, as long as they've got the mana for it, are going to be near immune to long-range harass. And that's really the only tool M5 has. What M Because what M5 needs to do is, is try to swipe out minion waves, which will be very difficult. They don't have a Nivea or Karthus or, or Caitlyn or things like that. They'll sweep uh, waves out really, really easily. So they're really relying on kind of getting into the fight, taking a bit of flack as they do it, and trying to harass back TPA. But as Taipei Assassins heals themselves back up, they're just going to put themselves over and over again in these long-range sort of siege situations where uh, they're just at odds, and they're going to take some damage, and they're going to hope to heal it back. Stanley now with the Golem buff is a huge deal here. He's going to have a lot more presence in those fights. So it, Darian, you know, yeah, forced to build a little bit differently in this game. We saw him go straight Triforce into that Guardian Angel. Now really not building himself tank either. Where are they going to find that front line for themselves to come from, Freak? Stanley is getting quite tanky, and they're really able to just come into these fights a lot stronger. And the difficulty here is that, you know, they're going to hopefully rely on Diamond to be a tank, but, uh, you know, with him going Mana Mune into a Trinity Force here, they don't have that front line. You heard uh, Dan talk about the fact that the team needed a Frozen Heart, uh, and, you know, and Reynolds Omen was right. in that mix as well on the Olaf in, in WE versus CLG. They, they need very directly a Frozen Heart in this matchup. They, they need that to help shut down BB on Veins. No one else, is, except for Toys, is a gigantic damage threat. Stanley, very utility-based. He added a, a Spirit Visage there just to be a, a, a bigger tank. He's got Mercury Treads overall. He's honestly a, a, just a, a mobile, low-cooldown tank trying to be as disruptive as possible and toss heals onto his team. It looks like he may be able to get out of this one as he just gets into that bush, that passive, going to give him some movement speed. And you can see him turning around knowing the aggression. TPA now going on to the Baron. It looks like they will be able to grab this one down. It will be nice for them. They wait on it, though. If they can get some damage, it will stop the Baron from healing. They keep that tick in. They're just waiting for them to come out. They're really baiting this fight out. They know that M5 is too spread out. Coming in from the side, it's going to be Diamond. He tries to steal it on Udyr, and he's not going to make it out alive. BB takes him down 13-4. to A huge push by TPA coming up. And that was really smart how they played that one out because they kept trying to bait Diamond into Flash over the wall. They did not want to risk that smite. You saw, again, you know, with, with the WE CLG match where they had control over Baron, they knew they'd probably get it, but Snoopy was afraid of getting outsmited. And they went, okay, we'll push it. Okay, hold on. All right, now now Kog'Maw got, got vision. Okay, but Wards are swept. Okay, go back in. And they bursted it down at the last second. You saw Diamond's Flash come in after Baron was killed because they just psyched him out enough to get full control. You know, Freak, oh my god, coming in so big. Genja, Krona shift down, but they continue to fight him. Genja will come back up, but he's going to be obliterated once more. No, he makes it out towards the top side. We do see that Darien falls. Genja forced away from and then back towards his turret. A double kill coming in. Huge game for BB here as he comes in to finish off this one with his team, focusing down onto Diamond, but it should be the inhibitor. They are going to gain some huge ground here as they turn Moscow 5's base into shambles. Moscow 5 not exactly flustered, but I think this is the first time we have seen them not be able to answer his strategy. The suffocation from Taipei Assassin's just too much. Huge damage coming from that Oriana Shockwave, but she is forced to bring it back. But no, yes, coming out huge toys just back down to his team, and it's going to be that second, that first Nexus turret, the second Nexus turret, the Nexus now, a game three, Moscow 5 forced to defend on the fountain, and it's going to be a huge matchup 